Please turn your Bibles to the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 1. Uh, put your finger there and we'll also turn to the book of Proverbs and we'll look at chapter 30, a few verses from chapter 30. First, I'm going to read from Philippians chapter 1. I'm going to read verse 21. And then we'll read Proverbs 30. Verses 24 through 28, we are going to resume the message series in Gospel of Luke next week. Uh, this week we'll, we'll, we'll meditate on Philippians 1, 21. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. I'm going to read from Proverbs chapter 30. I'm going to read from verses 24 through 28. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 24 through 28. If you need to turn there, you can turn there. Proverbs 30, 24 to 28. Four things are small on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise notice the words are not they are wise the words are they are exceedingly wise super wise the ants are not a strong people but they prepare their food in the summer the coney the conies conies can be considered as little rabbits if you will the conies are not mighty people, yet they make their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet all of them go out in ranks. The lizard, in the authorized version you have scorpion, but either ways, it's a small animal, that's the most important thing. The lizard you may grasp with the hands, Yet it is in king's palaces. Let us pray. Our gracious God, our heavenly Father, this morning we come to you, the living God, the true God, the God who speaks. Lord, we bow our hearts before you and we pray that you would speak to us, that this time is beneficial, profitable for us. Lord, uh, if a man speaks, there is only death, nothing happens. We pray that you would speak. When you spoke, the dead bones became alive. So we beg thee that you speak this morning. So this morning, I want to focus on those seven words. I'm not going to focus on the middle part of the verse, to, to live is Christ. I'm not going to focus on that. We, I'm hoping to finish by 1.30. So that means we have less than 45 minutes. So I'm not going to try to cover. But to me, that phrase, to live is Christ. I'm going to cover, for to me, to die is gain. That's what I want to cover this morning. To die is gain. To die is gain. Benjamin Franklin is uh, known to have phrased a sentence which is very popular. He phrased that sentence, Nothing in this world is certain except death and taxes. Nothing in this world is certain except 
death and taxes i want to give him a correction even taxes also you can avoid right you can avoid taxes so we can actually say nothing is certain in this world except death except to die commonly we meet two pe- two sorts of people two groups of people in this world the first group of people the moment we say death they don't want to hear it they will run away and this morning some of us might be saying i'm here for a blessing why is gautam brother talking about death i would classify such people in the first group they do not want to hear about death they are like adam of old when adam sin what is the first thing he did he hid he hid when god was coming he was evading the topic of death and there are so many people trying to avoid the topic of death they are running away they don't want to face this reality of death i hope this morning you are wise and you are not evading the topic of death we are all going to die one day you can take the best health you can do the best exercise we are going to die so we have to confront this thing called death we cannot evade it be wise this morning and consider this the second group of people are those what i would call in the Pauline category Paul he sees death and he says for me to die is gain for me to die is gain notice he doesn't say to die is loss he says to die is gain what are some of the words we can use for gain some of the words we can use for gain is for me to die is profit profit for me to die is advantage that's what he's saying it's an advantage paul did not look at it as a negative thing but he saw it as a positive thing now why is paul having this view this morning all of us should have a positive view of death why is paul having this positive it is saying it is gain it is advantage it is profit why i want to lead you through some things this morning why for the apostle it is gain why is it gain in the book of uh, in the gospels it is gain for him matthew chapter 16 verse 28 matthew chapter 16 verse 26 i'm sorry verse 26 for what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his own soul what will a man give in exchange for his soul the reason death is profitable or gain for the apostle is that he knows his soul is not lost his soul does not perish his soul will not enter into judgment in fact he says for me to die is gain gain and if i die now in the following verses in philippian 121 uh philippians 1 23 he says this i have the desire and depart and be with christ he knew that if he died he would not perish but he would be with christ his soul is not lost perishing because of sin he knew he would have a grand entry 
turn with me to Second uh, Peter, Second Peter chapter one, verse eleven. He knew this was this was his portion. If he died, Second Peter chapter one verse eleven. For in this way, the entrance into the eternal king in, eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be abundantly supplied to you. He knew his death means entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord. He knew he would have a grand welcome. If he died, he knew that just like the angels took that poor man Lazarus, who had nothing in this life, literally rags, literally dogs licking his wounds, but a rich man in God, just like that poor man who was picked up by the angels to be taken to heaven, he knew he would have the exact same welcome into heaven. And therefore, he sees it as a gain. He knew when he entered heaven, when the angels took him to, the, to heaven, he knew he would receive the approval of the Lord God. He would hear these words, well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. He knew he would hear these words from, from the Lord God. Enter into the joy of your master. Enter into the joy of your master. The apostle saw these things. And therefore, he says, that is gain to me. I will not perish. I'll have an abundant entry into the kingdom of God. I will hear those words. Enter. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter the joy of your master. And so he says, death is gain for me. He knew he would get the approval of God. Why else was death gain for him? Death would be gain for him because all life long in this world, he has been waiting to see the beautiful vision of God. Psalm chapter 27 verse 4. He was waiting all his life for his faith to be sight. He was waiting for the realization of his faith. For his hope. And it would be real now because he is leaving this world. Psalm 27 verse 4. One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Why? To behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. Paul knew that if he left this world, he would have the beautific vision of God. He would no longer know in part, but he would know in perfection. He would not no longer know partially, but fully. He would see his maker face to face. And so, he, he considered death again. He would experience in this beautiful vision in heaven, he would experience the love of God in its fullness. As John 4 8 says, God is love. Heaven is a world of love. Love beyond any description in this world. Paul, the apostle says in Romans 5 5, the love of God is poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. The Holy Spirit is this earnest. He gives us a glimpse of the love of God. He gives us this earnest, this first payment of the love of God. But the fullness of the love of God is when we go and see the beautiful vision of God, when we are in His presence, 
this love of God, this torrent of God, this flood of the love of God is poured on us. The apostle knew that in the ages to come, we might know the surpassing riches of the kindness of God toward us. Let's just read one verse from Ephesians 2.7. Dear brothers and sisters, in this age we only know partially. We don't know in full. Our human finiteness cannot help us to see fully. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 7, this is what he says. So that in the ages to come, God might show the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. In this age we don't know. We know nothing. But in that age, the exceeding riches of His grace, His kindness would be shown to us. Meaning in His presence, they would be shown to us. God is love. The beautific vision of God. God's love poured out in its fullest measure. God is light. Light means purity. Light means holiness. Light means righteousness. The apostle knew if he would die, he would have the experience that the saints had. Turn with me to Psalm 17. 17. Verse 15. 17, 15. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. I will be satisfied with your likeness when I awake. As for me, when I die, I will behold your face in righteousness, in light, in purity. I will be satisfied. I will be satisfied in your likeness, in God's likeness. Psalmist is saying, when I awake. Psalm 36. Psalm 36. Verse 9. In your light, we see light. In your light, in your presence, in your presence, we see this pure righteousness, pure light. The apostle knew that he would put on these garments of light, garments of righteousness. No more sin, no more the vestiges of sin, but these garments of light, garments of righteousness. And so he saw it as a gain. In the book of Revelation, we see the saints. We see the saint. Let's turn to uh, uh, Revelation chapter 7. John seeing heaven. Revelation 7. John sees this crowd. Verse 9, After these things I looked, behold, a great multitude which no one can count, from every nation, from every tribe, from every people, from every tongue, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, clothed in white robes. Verse 13, then one of the elders answered, saying to me, These who are clothed in the white robes, who are they? Where, they, where have they come from? Verse 14, John, I said to the elder, My Lord, you know, he said to me, These are the ones who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes. They have made them white in the blood of the Lamb. It's a picture, whiteness, righteousness. These are white. 
Paul knew these white garments would be his when he entered heaven. In the beautific vision, he would see the love of God, the light, the righteousness of God. He knew, according to Psalm 85 verse 10, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. They love each other. Righteousness and peace love each other. This peace of God would be his in its fullness in heaven. It was gain. This peace of God was gain, which comes because of his righteousness in Christ. He knew he would enter a totally different life in the beautific vision. He knew, according to Psalm 16, what is partial now would be, com would be complete, would be perfect. Psalm 16, verse, verse, verse 11. In your presence is fullness of joy. The fullness of joy, the perfection of joy would be his. In your right hand, there are pleasures evermore. Psalm 36. Not only will he have fullness of joy, Psalm 36, something else, verse 8, he will have full satisfaction. He will have full satisfaction. Psalm 36, verse 8 says this, they drink their satisfaction of the abundance of your house. You give them to drink of the river of your delights. You give them to drink of the river of your pleasures. Every time we see the throne of God, there is a river that is flowing from the throne of God. It's called the, it has many descriptions, the river of life, river of the water of life. The picture is, that this water that flows from his throne is able to satisfy us. Nothing can satisfy us except this, this water from the river that flows from his throne. In the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon, the wise man, says this. He pursued pleasure. He pursued pleasure of all kinds. Verse 3, I explored with my mouth. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 3. I explored with my mind how to stimulate my body with wine while my mind was guiding me wisely. He tried all pleasures. He had all riches, verses, I'm going to read from chapter 2, verse 7. I bought male and female servants. I have home-born slaves. I possessed flocks, herds, larger than anyone who preceded me in Jerusalem. I collected silver, gold, treasures of kings. I provided for myself male, female singers, pleasures of men. I became great, increased more than all who preceded me, proceed, preceded me in. Jerusalem, verse 10, all that my eyes desired, I did not refuse them. I did not withhold from my heart any pleasure. From my heart, from, for my heart was pleased because of all the labor. And this was the reward for all my labor. Verse 11, then I considered, thus I considered all my activities which my hands have done. And the labor which I have exerted, behold, all was vanity, striving after the wind. There is no profit under the sun. He's saying, pleasure, everything I try, it is vanity. It is not profitable. It is not gain. He's saying, money, everything I have, it is. Now, it is no profit. It is all vanity. 
But here in the beautific vision, 36 verse 8, Psalm 36 verse 8, they drink their satisfaction of the abundance of the house of God. You give them to drink of the river of your pleasures. Satisfied in this vision of God, in the presence of God. The apostle knew not only of the love, not only of the light, the life, a, a totally different life, a life which is full of rest. There remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. Turn with me to Revelation once again. Revelation chapter 14. Verse 13. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the, in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit. So that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds will follow, will follow them. When Adam sinned, what came into this world? Toil. Genesis 3.26, toil, labor. In heaven, there is rest from all the labor. They may rest from all their labor from all their toil. Job 41 says, man whose life is short-lived, is short-lived but full of turmoil. Full of turmoil. Short life, full of turmoil, turbulence. In heaven, the apostle knows rest from all labor, from all toil, from all turmoil. He knew he trusted Christ for his salvation. And so, he is going to see the beautific vision of God. He saw it as a gain. Not only that, he saw that when he left this world, he would see the Lamb of God. He would see his Redeemer. He would see his Savior. He would see his big brother who purchased his salvation. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 7 verse 16 and 17. They will hunger no longer, nor thirst anymore, nor the sun beat down on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb in the center of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to the springs of the water of life. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The Lamb in the center of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to the springs of the water of life. He knew he would see the Lamb of God who sacrificed himself on the cross of Calvary, his Savior, his Redeemer. Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. I saw before the throne four living creatures, the elders, a lamb standing as if slain. The lamb slain. He knew when he would be in heaven, he would see the slain lamb. That Every wound of the slain lamb spoke of the love of God towards him. The love of the Savior towards him. He will experience the fullness of the love of Christ. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8 verse 16. Verse 17 rather. If he, and if children. Hairs also, hairs of God and co hairs with Christ. Co hairs with Christ. What's the difference between a hair and a co hair? 
the difference is this when cohere a property is shared by the brothers they will never separate if if it is separated he becomes a heir but if it is cohere they are never separated he knows that he would see the lamb slain and they would be forever together they are cohere he has this elder brother they are together the apostle knew he would see the lamb that was slain for him the savior so he considered it gain Re revelation chapter 5 verse 10 I'm going to read from verse nine. They sang a new song, saying, "Worthy are you to take the book to break its seals, for you were slain, and purchased for God with your blood men from every tribe, every tongue, every people, every nation. You have made them a kingdom, or you have made them kings, kings." the apostle knew he would reign with christ he knew these extraordinary privileges like judging the angels would be his portion this high state being a king cohere with christ ruling with christ was his portion he would not only be a king but he would be a priest who is a priest in the old testament the priest entered the presence of god only once every year only that great only the high, high priest entered he entered the holy, most holy place only once the apostle knew he would be not a temporary priest he would be a priest consistently constantly in the presence of god Turn with me to Revelation chapter twenty-one. Again, heaven, verse twenty-two. I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. temple is a confined thing right so there is this presence of god in the temple and people would go they would visit they would worship at the temple and they would go back home the temple contained the presence of god but in heaven there is no temple in the sense like there is no restricted time to access god there is no temple god himself dwells there as a priest Paul knew that he would have access to God all the time. He saw it as great gain. He saw it as gain. He saw himself. His soul is saved. He gained his soul. He gained the approval of God. He would have this beautiful vision of God. He would see the Lamb of God. he knew he would meet the saints of god he would he knew he would meet all the spiritual forefathers he would meet abraham david every saint nehemiah ezra every saint in the old testament he knew all his heroes he would meet definitely it is gain for him the apostle knew he would meet all who influenced his faith journey he would meet his spiritual parents who instilled in him the word of god from a young age believers have all this child of god have all this
I'm only giving you a small subset of all the things mentioned in scripture. If you read the scripture closely, you will find many more things. I'm only giving you a small subset. Dear ones, Paul saw the innumerable privileges of the child of God. And he says, it is gain to me. It is profit. It is advantage for me. This morning, the question before us is, are we able to say with the Apostle Paul, death is gain for me. Death is an advantage. Death is a profit for me. Are we able to say? Many of us are presumptive. We, th we think we are only 30, we think we are only 40, we, we think only uh, we are 50, we have a lot of life. Dear ones, our life is not in our hands, that's presumption. Our life is very uncertain. We have to make sure today, what is our view of death? Are we evading death or are we saying, death is gain for me? I will experience the everything the apostle knows he is going to experience. We have to make sure this morning before we walk out, we are able to say, death is gain for me. Now, when can we say that? When can we say that? I'm afraid some of us can't say it. Some of us have been evading, escaping this topic of death. How can we... How can death become gain for us? How can death become gain for us? Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. The Lord tells us, Go, look at that little creature and Look Look at it. Look at it. It's exceedingly wise. Why is it wise? They prepare their food in summer. It's not escaping the reality that in winter there will not be food. It's not escaping. It's, it's sitting face to face and saying, okay, in winter there is not going to be food. I must prepare for winter. I must in harvest time store so that I can survive in winter. This morning the Lord is saying to us, see that wise it is, see that and it is wise. It's speaking to you. It's confronting the reality of death. Reality of its, not death, but reality of winter. In your case, Confront the reality of death. Be wise. And what does it do? It prepares itself. And this morning the Lord says, you prepare yourself. You prepare yourself to this fact of death. Don't escape. Don't avoid. Be real. Learn from the ant. Be prepared. The Lord says, Learn from the coney. Learn from this little creature. What does this little creature do? This little creature is weak. It can build a home. When there is rain, it does not have the ability to build a home and protect itself. So what does it do? It is wise. It sees it does not have strength. So what does it do? It sees the rocks. Verse 26. They make their houses in the rocks. It sees this rock. It says the rock God has already prepared. Let me go. Let me hide under the rock. Learn from the coney that hides itself in the rock. It makes the rock it, its home. And the message is clear, isn't it? 
how can we in our limitedness how can we stand before the torrents of god's judgment how can we in our righteousness with all our filthiness stand before this infinitely holy majestic god we cannot we are like the coney before the rain the coney will be washed away we also will be washed away god has prepared a rock god has prepared the rock of ages it is a cleft for us that rock is christ jesus he has prepared all salvation for us god says listen to the coney just as it hides itself in the rock you hide in yourself in the person of christ he alone is able to give a solid foundation when the torrents of god's wrath the torrents of god's judgment are before us he alone listen to the coney there are so many people today they think because of their righteousness they will stand before god that is the most dumbest thing i've ever heard you a finite creature with all your sin will you stand before god in your righteousness your righteousness is like filthy rags it's like saying i have a deep cancer four stage cancer but i will live nonsense the cancer will kill you you might think you will live but you will not live the cancer will kill you to stand before god based on our righteous deeds is absolute nonsense his righteousness reaches to the heavens can we reach the heavens no our righteousness is filthy rags in god's eyes oh what stupidity what foolishness people rely on on their own works oh there is only one rock the rock of christ come this morning listen to the coney be wise the lord says be wise like the wa and prepare yourself for that day the lord says like the coney take refuge in the person of christ who substituted for you on the cross of calvary he offers a full and free salvation take refuge in christ the lord says be wise look to the locust the locusts are a tiny animal the tiny fly if you will what can they accomplish but they destroy huge areas of crop how do they do that they do it because they work together they work together these the swarms of these locusts they work together and they destroy they basically work together for their survival they destroy they destroy these huge acres of land they are able to do it because of their working together their partnership with one another god when he calls us unto salvation he gives us all resources he gives us his word he gives us his spirit he knows we cannot live the christian life he gives us his word his spirit ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 verse 12 and 13 my beloved just as you always obeyed not only in my presence but much more in my absence work out your salvation with fear and trembling for it is god who is at work in you both to will and to do, to work for his good pleasure god says i know you can't save yourself i know you can't be holy by yourself i know your will power cannot break the power of sin sin is the second greatest power after god I know you can't break sin so I've given you resources 
I'm working in you. I've given you my word. I've given you my spirit. Come, partner with me. Join, cooperate with me. I will sanctify you. I'll help you grow in holiness. Just like the locust. As they partner together. You partner with me. I will help you grow in salvation. Grow in holiness. Grow in righteousness. The Lord says. The Lord says, look at the lizard. Look at this. If you want to use authorized version, look at the scorpion. This little creature, it's able to see the glory of the palace. It's able to see the, the majesty of the king's palace. So what does it do? It's out there in the wild. Somehow it makes its way through all the layers of security into the king's palace. Do you, the Lord says, the scorpion's teaching you wisdom. Can't you see the beautiful vision of God? Can't you see this world of love? Can't you see this world of righteousness? Look at that scorpion. Look at that lizard, that little creature. I have given you intelligence. If that thing is able to make its way through all the struggles into the king's palace, what's wrong with you? Learn from the lizard. Death is certain. That is sure. The alternate, the other alternative, you know, the wrath of God, the distress, the tribulation of the soul. And the, this alternative is the glory of God, is heaven. Why would you be foolish? Learn from the lo learn, learn from the lizard. It overcomes all the difficulties to make its way to the king's palace. What's stopping you from entering the king's palace? The, the king of glory's palace. What's stopping you? Is it social culture? Is it your friends? What is it? Give up your social culture. Give up your whatever is needed. Give up. Don't be a fool. You have the king's glory. Do everything. So just like the lizard, you can enter the king's palace. The believers, some of us are discouraged, disappointed. The devil's attacks. The world's enticements. Different things. And we are stumbling. The Lord says, listen to you. Listen, listen to the lizard. Look at the lizard. The sufferings of this present age are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed in us. Romans 8, 18. The Lord says, you have need of patience. You have need of endurance. After you have suffered for a little while, you will receive the promise. The promise of the king's palace, the glory, the beautiful vision of God, the sight of the Lamb of God. This morning, the question again before us is, what is your view of death? Are you evading it? Or are you able to say with confidence, I am in the apostles' camp. Death is gain. I will save my soul. I will have the beautiful vision of God. I will see the Lamb at the center of the throne. I will see all the saints of God in all the redemptive history who have trusted Him, who have let go of things in this world and trusted Him. I am going to see all of them. I am going to be part of this heavenly crowd that trusted in the living God. What is your conviction this morning? The Lord says, Look at the ant. Look at the kani. Look at the locust. Look at the lizard. Prepare like the ant. Take your refuge like the coney in the person of Christ. Work in cooperation with God the Holy Spirit to grow in salvation. 
through all trials and tribulations in this the wilderness of this life looking unto Jesus proceed forward hold fast to the word and you will be in the king's palace this morning the exhortation for us is what is your view of death the invitation this morning is come turn from your sins put your faith in jesus put your faith in the lord jesus the devil only can give you death but the lord promises to give you life and life abundance come to him let death be gain for you let us pray this morning we come to you o lord we see the torrents of thy wrath against our sin how may we stand in thy presence lord we have no foundation all other foundations other than the foundation of christ o lord is sinking sand in christ the solid rock i stand i pray my my lord my father that you would help everyone in this room to have the same foundation I pray, O oh God, help us to be wise like the coney. We ask you for help, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, help us to grow in partnership with you in our salvation. Help us, O oh Lord, to overcome the obstacles of life. Help us, O oh Lord, that we may, through tribulations, enter into your kingdom. Help us to look unto Jesus, the Author and Perfecter of our faith. we pray these things in the precious name of our savior the lord jesus christ amen now may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of the father communion of holy spirit rest and abide with us both now and forevermore amen